Mountain biking is one of the most fun things you can do and one of the major benefits of it is you can do it literally anywhere. And of course to do that, you're either gonna to need to transport your bike in a car from time to time, or if you're lucky enough to be able to fly and go on holiday, for example, you're gonna to need to pack your bike into some kind of box to protect it. This video is all about what you need to do to your bike in order to protect it and the best way to pack it in a bag. Douche bags are our travel bag partner. So for today's video, I'm gonna be using this, the Savage, their brand new bike bag. So in this video, I've decided to use my Nukeproof Mega 275C simply because it's the biggest bike I have. So this, if any bike, is the one that's gonna cause problems when you fit it into a box. So I'm gonna show you the little things you might have to work around. But of course, you're gonna to need to disassemble quite a few bits on a bike before packing it away. There's also a few other things to consider, like letting some air pressure out of your shocks and your tires. Now I've traveled many times having not done this and it's been no problem whatsoever, but some airlines do request that you do do this. So letting a little bit of air out of your tires is no harm. It's an easy thing to reinflate, but I do recommend not completely going flat, especially if your tires are set up tubeless because it can make your holiday get off to a slow start at the other end. As far as letting some air pressure out of your shock and fork goes, just take note of that air pressure that you ride normally before you do so and jot it down on a bit of paper. It's handy to keep that bit of paper on the inside of your bike bag or your bike box just for reference. It makes it a little bit quicker to get back out on the trails. Now also, because this bike is especially big and in the past I have struggled with the length of the bike getting it into a bike bag, I've ended up having to release all of the air out of the fork and actually compress the fork as well as turning it backwards just to give myself that little extra room when putting it inside the bag. So let's get this thing taken apart and then we'll start putting it into the bike bag itself. So for disassembling your bike, you're obviously gonna need a few tools. Now at the other end, it might be convenient for you to have a decent multi-tool to take out riding on the trails, but they're not always the easiest thing to use for stuff like this. So I would personally stick one of these in my riding bag, which I'd also chuck inside my bike bag, but I like to actually bring a couple of dedicated multi-tools from home, just because they're a lot easier to use for this sort of thing. I've also got my eight millimeter Allen key for removing the pedals. And of course I've got those disc pad spacers that I've kept from when my brakes were new. Then next up, I'm gonna remove my wheels from the bike. Uh, I'm gonna do this by flipping the bike upside down and resting it on the saddle and on the handlebars. Now, if your bike has a computer or any sort of protruding things on the bars, make sure you're on a level surface. And also I'm on carpet here, so it's not gonna scratch anything. So just take that into account when you do this with your own bike. Okay, so with the wheel out, you wanna get your pad spacers and put them in between the brake pads. This is so if your brake levers accidentally get actuated without the wheels in, you're not gonna to have to mess around with those pistons and try and sort of leave them open at the other end. It means your brakes will be in exactly the same state as when you packed that bike. Now, of course, make sure that your pad spaces are clean. I mean, this one's dirty, but it is the residue from these pads from a previous trip. So just make sure that you do the same. And also, just another thing to note is when you put your axle back into the fork or into the frame, I'd only recommend putting this in loosely. The reason for that is if you tighten it up, you're actually going to pull everything together. You don't want to do that. So it's still got free movement if it needs to or if it accidentally gets squashed. It also means you know where your axle is because it's part of the frame and part of the fork. So it's not going to go wonders in your bike bag and accidentally scratch part of your bike. Now I'm just repeating the same process for the back end here. Just backing out that axle, removing it from the bike. The wheel comes out, which we will deal with in a minute. Make sure you get that pad space that's nice and clean in between the rear brake pads here. It does its job. That means they're gonna hit the trails faster at the other end. I'm just gonna replace that axle, but like the front, I'm not gonna do this up tight, it's just in, so the frame can move if it needs to, and also you're not squashing it. Okay, so the bike is mostly ready. I still need to remove the handlebars and the rear derailleur off there, but just before I flip it up and get on with that, I just wanna talk you through the types of bike bag and box available out there. Now there's all sorts of different price ranges and obviously the cheapest option will be a regular conventional cardboard box that bikes are shipped to bike shops or even to you if you buy a direct sale bike. Now, whilst these are fairly strong and obviously they're cheap, you can go down to a local bike shop and probably be lucky enough to offer them some biscuits and take it off their hands because they generally have to pay to have this stuff recycled. So a bike box is obviously cheap, but 
You're only gonna get what you pay for, okay? So a bike box can structurally be strong. It can protect your bike, but you're gonna to have to wrap it up in loads of bubble wrap or clothing and stuff to protect everything. And even then, you're not guaranteed. You're gonna be taking your chances. Now, I've seen some people travel very successfully using a traditional cardboard bike box. And I've also seen others fail miserably. And one of those is Rob Warner, who, of course, you might know him from the stuff he does on Red Bull with the downhill mountain bike stuff. Now, Rob, bearing in mind that Rob's got a fair bit of cash, he just didn't want to lay out for a bike box, so he used a conventional cardboard box, taped it up, all that sort of stuff. That box was subject to a bit of bad weather, and when the bikes actually came out on the, on the baggage belt at the other end, his bike came out without the bike box, and it was scratched and it was dented and all sorts. It was a brand new giant rain at the time, and then the box came out in bits and pieces afterwards. So you are totally taking it into your own hands. It's not the baggage handler's fault if your box disintegrates because it's made of cardboard. But again, that's a cheap option. So if you're just doing this once, that might suit you. Now bike bags, they're not cheap. But a bike bag, if you're putting a bike into it that's several thousand pounds, then suddenly it looks like a very sensible idea. Now you're gonna be able to pick up bike bags, anything up to about 500 quid. Uh, it's probably about $600 in the US. So it does vary depending on the brand. But there's certain things I do recommend looking for. Now the cheapest option of bike bags will just be tough material and they won't have any sort of structure to them, which means when you put your bike into them, they can flop around all over the place. They're not going to protect your bike much better than a traditional cardboard box. And also they're going to be a bit of a pain to lug around an airport. You have to factor this in as well. Now whilst you can get trolleys at airports to put your bikes on, when you stack most bikes on, you have to do them across ways, which means they're a pain to get through doors. You're, you've got to twist the trolley sideways, and quite often you'll come across those bollards, which means you have to decant everything off the trolley, go through, put it all back on again. It's an absolute pain. So what I recommend looking for, having done this many times and cursed along the way, is a proper bag with decent wheels on it. Now this particular bag is from Douchebags, it's called the Savage. It's got really wide stance wheels at the back, which means it's an absolute pleasure to sort of wheel around an airport, even when it's fully laden. Now there are other bags on the market as well that offer similar principles, but the thing I like about this particular bag is what's inside. It's got a roll cage system on the inside which protects your bike. And the reason I'm telling you that now is because I'm gonna pack my bike into this particular bag and I'm gonna use the blocks that come with the bag to protect the fork, the chain set, and of course the back of the bike. So first up is putting the bottom bracket block on. This protects the chain rings on the bike from basically being bashed around too much, and it means you don't have to worry too much about that stuff. Now, the thing that's really cool about this particular system is the fact that it clips directly into the rails at the bottom of the bag, which are part of the structure. So your bike actually going in the bag makes the structure solid. So it's a really, really good system and it's very strong. So I literally just have to clamp these down, lock them in place, and that is good, ready to go into the bag. So next up is I just need to protect the front fork, and again, they've got a block for this, which is fantastic. It goes over the whole front of the fork there. It means that nothing's gonna get scratched. It can secure this in place. And then, this is for actually housing handlebars inside the bag once I flip it the correct way up. Now, just before I do that, I'm also gonna remove the rear derailleur from the bike. Now, whilst this is a very protective bag, and like a lot of the other bags that are very protective, there's still a chance that your bike can somehow become dislodged or somehow move around or get trampled on. And if your rear mech is subject to that, that is gonna break your rear derailleur hanger or the rear mech. So just safeguard yourself, just take it off, let it dangle, and it's all good. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is just flip the bike up the other way now and just remove the handlebars for safe storage inside the bag. Okay, so the bike is prepped and it's all safe and ready to go inside the bag. Next stage, of course, is to open the bag up, clip the bike in and start building the frame around it. Now, just before you finish putting your bike in there and zipping the wheels in, I just want to take you through a few things that are really useful to take with you inside your bike bag. Now, of course, Always recommend taking an inner tube, very helpful in case you are unlucky enough to get puncture. And if you keep them in there, you kind of forget they're in there, but they're always gonna be useful at some point. Of course, you're gonna need a pump to inflate your tires at the other end, and in case you get any sort of problems on your trip. Up to you whether you wanna take a floor standing pump. If you do, bear in mind you might wanna wrap it up so it doesn't rattle around and damage your bike. Personally, I like to take a mini floor standing pump, so it's the best of both worlds. It's small enough that I can take it riding in my riding bag, 
but yet handles really well as a functioning pump. Very good that. Don't forget shock pump, you're gonna need that to tweak your suspension and get that reinflated at the other end. Good old fashioned cable ties, always a good idea to travel with those and a set of cable cutters in order to cut those. And whilst you're at it, some inner cables. Always useful in case you do snap a cable, be that for your fork lockout, your shock lockout, your dropper seat post, or of course, your rear derailleur. Always a sensible idea to have a patch kit and a couple of tire boots, put those inside, and whilst you're at it, make sure you carry a chain link. Definitely a joining link, whether it's 11 speed, 10 speed, 12 speed, whatever it is for your bike, carry one. They will come in handy at some point. Now, of course, you're gonna to wanna to put your pedals in there, along with your Allen keys that you disassembled the bike with. So you're gonna stash those away safely inside the bike bag. Of course, you might want a tire lever or two to take with you. Personally, I like to take a spare set of cleats with me and also in there, a few set of chaining bolts and some other random bolts just in case. Now, CO2 cartridges are something that do come into a bit of question when it comes to traveling with airlines. Now, some airlines will allow you to and others will not because they do count them as part of the dangerous things to carry. So definitely check with your airline. It's kind of ironic because the life jackets that they supply you with use CO2 cartridges to inflate them, yet some airlines do stipulate you're not allowed to travel with them. They're very cheap to get the other end, so definitely check before you take these with you because if you do have to take it all out of your bag, it's a lot of hassle and it's not really a nice way to start your holiday. Even though you're going abroad to ride somewhere nice, hopefully, I definitely recommend taking a mud guard because if you end up there with bad weather, it's not ideal. Now, of course, the last two things, some rubber gloves just to work on the bike at the other end and some chain lube. And I always tend to put the chain lube inside one of those rubber gloves and make sure that that's tied up because that way, if it does leak inside the bike bag, it's not gonna contaminate anything, just less mess. Common sense, really. Now, whether you've got a bag like the Savage or not, you do need to take care of your bike when you put it in. Use bubble wrap, use cardboard, use riding clothing, your knee pads. I see a lot of people using knee and shin pads on the frame, both to transport that stuff and obviously to protect your bike as well. Luckily, this system has a roll cage that protects everything and it's got this nice handlebar carrier and everything is part of the bag. But you can replicate some of this stuff yourself. It's cardboard under the bottom bracket to keep it off the bottom of the bag. And the same, make sure that your frame isn't contacting the bag because that's the sort of part of the bike that can get damaged if bikes are all stacked up or if there's an accident and they all sort of fall off the plane, that sort of thing. Okay, final stages of the bike in the bag is putting this together with this tent pole style roll cage system. And then you've got these straps that help the bike form part of the structure of the bag. So it's incredibly rigid, incredibly protective but it relies on the whole system as a whole to keep it all in place. The rear strap comes on, we'll tighten that in a minute. we we'll just put the top bar in place. Tighten these up. Good, that's pretty solid already. The last thing is just to put the wheels inside the bag. Something to factor in, uh, if your bike bag is anything like the Savage that's got protective wheel compartments in it and you don't want to remove your disc rotors, make sure you face the disc rotors in towards the bike. That way they'll be protected from impacts that happen on the outside of the bag. So the last thing to do is to just zip up the bike bag there. You might want to put a lock on that, it's up to you, but security from time to time do want to just double check the state of the bike, so I would recommend maybe asking them before you put it on the plane. And then make sure any of your handles are usable. And if you've got any luggage tags, definitely recommend putting something with your name and address on there because if your bike bag is unlucky enough to not make it onto your flight, they will be able to get that information a little bit easier. So there we go, that is how to safely pack your very nice mountain bike into a bike bag and take it on a riding trip. For a couple more very useful videos, click down the bottom there for pre-ride essential checks there. So some of those are safety-based, common sense, that sort of stuff. Helps you look after your bike that bit better. And click up the top there if you want to see five essential hacks on getting your disc brakes absolutely perfected. As always, click on that round globe to subscribe to the channel. Of course, we've got brand new content for you here at GMBN Tech every single week. And if you like the channel and you like this video, give us a thumbs up. I'm off to the airport now. See you later.